Warning, the following video contains uncensored language at the strongest level. Viewer discretion is strongly advised. It's your buddy, Kid Thunder. I haven't done a single rant in about months. It's time for me to bitch about something. Now on this topic, I'm going to rant about. It's not a video that's either a hate video or a fanboy based video and whatnot. <clears throat> it's actually, this video is going to be on the informative side as well as my personal experience as a gamer. Now I'm going to rant about a few things. But before I do, let's get into what the video game industry is about. Throughout all the years of my life, I've seen video games changed and evolved in every way, shape, and form. To express the industry in a nutshell, it is a growing industry. But my thing is that I don't think that while we as gamers that are in the current generation of gaming, in my personal opinion, I do see the industry is going up and down to a more or less extent. My one beef about the video game industry of this current generation is that the reason why I am running on this is because the spark isn't there anymore. I think I would say in my honest opinion the spark of video games pretty much died out after the days of the PSX, N64, uh, Saturn, and Dreamcast days. Yes, the video game industry is pretty competitive, but I don't know about you, but I've seen the video on YouTube before. I believe it was by a, a person by the name of Indead is talking about this. Like, I mean, the name of the video is called What Is This Console War You Speak Of? And he makes a excellent point stating that um, everywhere we turn around whether it's on the internet video game magazines or whatnot it's console war this and console war that I would happen to believe that this whole console war thing of a is basically something that is you know directed towards fanboys and even the game companies itself but I don't know man I just think that the whole video game console wars of this current generation is not how it used to be back in the olden days of gaming it seems that in my honest opinion with this current generation of video games like the companies are pretty much out there for just only one major thing corporate greed not try to be on a marketing employee not trying to be on a market employee they just want you to be out there just to buy their shit and so they can feel happy at the end but let me go ahead and show you something right now okay ladies and gents I understand that we do live in a time of Sony and Microsoft right now with PlayStation versus Xbox. But before we even go on, let's go ahead and take it back in the past and, you know, let's reenact with you with the whole video game console wars that took place between Sega and Nintendo being the prime competitors. You see, back in the mid 80s, set like around 1984 and 1985, like the video game industry in America was pretty much in a entire recession just like we're in a type of recession in this country as of right now but come to think of it a Japanese company by the name of Nintendo um, they released the Famicom this system but come to think of it when it was released here it was known as the NES and the NES, we've all seen it, we've all know what it is, we all like it. I don't know about you little kids out there who think you know everything. With your HD and Blu-ray and all that other bullshit out there. But anyways, 
I love I love the system as a kid growing up, and I love the system as as of still today. And come to think of it, it's worth mentioning that you know, in terms of NES games, there are a lot of NES games out there, or well, there are some NES games out there. You know, that's kind of like on the quote-unquote homebrew side. You know, people making homebrew NES games in this current age right now. And come to think of it, you know, homebrew is basically the thing, the newest thing that's going on right now. I mean, I love homebrew. I actually want to get into it, you know, because I really have an interest in making NES games because... I don't know. NES was the shit, to be honest. I mean, I don't remember that many bad games on there. I don't think I ever played that many. I mean, as far as what I don't know, I mean, as far as what I know, the most terrible NES games I've ever touched on on there is probably, you know, has a Rainbow of Death stamped on there. Obviously, the LJN logo, who is notorious for holding a monopoly on shitty games back in the days of the NES. But, as well as the unlicensed bullshit that was out there, too. And I don't think I. But come to think of it, I never really remembered that many bad games on the NES or ever touched that many as well, too. But I have to say, the NES was and still is the fucking shit as of today and I have an unbreakable bond with this system because that's how much I love this system it's my fate I have to I don't know it's maybe it may be my favorite game system of all time but I'll tell you more about this later about that too now some of us may not remember this console right here this is the Sega Master System which is actually Sega's second home console not the Genesis no and this was not Sega's first home console the S Sega's first home console had to be the Sega SG-1000 which was only in Japan I believe now, Sega Master System didn't do so well in America and Japan, but it did extensively well in the PAL regions. Sega's main mascot while the Master System was around was Alex Kidd, but as soon as Genesis and Sonic took over, basically the Alex Kidd license got dropped by Sega. The only downside to the Sega Master System was that it had an extreme lack of third-party developer support at the time of its release, mainly because Nintendo had a lot of third-party developer support back in the day. I actually plan on getting me this game console one of these days. Now, I know we live in the year 2010, and some of you all... 360 and PS3 and Wii owners might say this like you need to stop buying all these old games and shit well FYI dipshits I'm a collector and I really collect these game systems for collection purposes obviously I mean and not to mention that's primarily it Okay, next up is the TurboGrafx-16, or in other in other words, the PC Engine, which is obvious, which is that is the Japanese slash Power Region counterpart. Um, the TurboGrafx-16, it base it was basically like a 16-bit game console, but some people refer to it as like a you know another 8-bit game console but you know it had like two because it had like two 8-bit processors and whatnot inside the system but I'm not gonna look this for a technical advancement now this is another game console I never really heard of as a kid growing up I mean but I kinda would wanna collect this system but the only downside is that if you were to collect a TurboGrafx-16 
nine times out of ten, they, these guys are usually h hard to come by. I mean, and some of them are, you know, if you look on Amazon or eBay, they only sell these things in limited quantities and whatnot. But that's another story. Due to YouTube's 11 minute time limit, I have to make this video in like multiple parts. So stay tuned for part two. This is Kid Thunder signing out. Take care.